Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gershwan, and today we're going to be talking about Space Marines, specifically what a boarding action for a Space Marine looks like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K lore videos every single day. If you have any suggestions for any topics, please comment down below. And if you enjoy our content, thank our patrons on Patreon. It's because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. But with that said... Let's get into 40 facts on the boarding actions of a space marine. Boarding actions between starships are truly deadly affairs. Vicious and swift close quarter duels in the most treacherous and dangerous environments imaginable. In short, the kind of conflict that space marines were created for. The vessels of the early 31st millennium ranged in size and role from the interplanetary cargo scopes to mighty battleships with crews numbering in the thousands, serving as the flagships of the Imperium's far-ranging expeditionary fleets. Larger still were the Mechanica mass conveyors, tens of kilometers in length, and unfathomably ancient drifting space hulks that dwarfed even these. In the case of these larger vessels, regardless of whether they were engines of war or a colony arc, their sheer size granted them weaknesses to be exploited, just as their immense bulk made them difficult to destroy by more conventional means. For these mighty void ships, damage to a specific system could be as fatal to them as poison injected into a living heart. The best way of doing this was often by breaching the hull of an enemy vessel and assaulting it with troops. If they were victorious, then the ship might be crippled, captured intact, or even destroyed from within. Only the most skilled and able warriors were selected to undertake boarding assaults, and attrition amongst them was always high, as was the glory gained should they succeed. The shipboard defenders who repelled a boarding assault had to fight with all of the courage and ferociousness they could muster if they were to save their vessel. For the loser, death was certain. As aboard a starship surrounded by the infinite darkness of the cold and silent void, there was nowhere to retreat or run to. Most boarding actions take place against the backdrop of a fierce void battle in which immense destructive forces quite beyond the combatants' control are unleashed that might even destroy the very ship through which they are fighting. Even when the boarded ship is not taking direct hits in battle, the effects of prior damage can cause secondary explosions to rip through its hull, or the vessel might itself be caught in the crossfire or ride through the blast waves of dying ships and lethally spinning debris. A hit-and-run attack is a crucial tactic used in ship-to-ship -ship combat and involves one or more boarding parties forcing access to a target ship, fighting their way through the companion's way with the aim of destroying key systems. Boarding an enemy vessel with the aim of destroying, crippling, or capturing it is a grueling task, and one that will exact high price in blood for both the attacker and the defender over a number of savage battles. A Void Strike mission represents the most perilous phase of a boarding assault for an attacker, the attempt to establish a foothold on the enemy vessel from which to press forward towards its most vital areas. The interior of a starship is a tangled labyrinth of pathways and chambers. Wrecking missions represent an attack on one of several vital target areas, ranging from the warship's massive plasma drive to its command deck. The larger the starship, the more these systems that the attackers have to cripple in order to bring about the death of the vessel. Sometimes an attacking force will utilize a desperate gamble instead of launching a boarding mission against the target vessel's most easily accessible launch base or loading decks. They attack the outer, armored skin in an attempt to cut through and strike directly into the vessel's under-defended and most vulnerable systems. A successful killing blow can conclude a hit-and-run attack before the defenders can even repel the boarders. If the attackers fail, they are doomed to a cold death as the Void claims them. There are many vessels used for boarding actions, but the most popular ship used by the Space Marines was the Caestus Assault Ram. This pattern of assault ram has been popular since the days of the Great Crusade due to its high speed and phenomenal durability. The ship was designed to cross the void of space between two void ships at extreme speeds and collide directly with the enemy vessel. It would use its forward-firing heavy melta weapon, known as a magna melta, to weaken the hull armor of the enemy ship before the craft's armored prow crashed through the weakened area, completely puncturing through the enemy vessel's hull and burrowing into its superstructure, where it would unleash its payload of Astarte warriors to wreak havoc inside the enemy craft. The Caestus was one of the most well-armored assault rams in the Imperium, 
yet it sacrificed little for its speed. The craft's front, which would bear most of the enemy's fire, was heavily armored and protected with a heavy superstructure that was buttressed by inertial recoil compensation systems. These systems included a near-unique misericordia system that was designed to interlock with Space Marine power armor or Terminator armor protecting a full squad complement aboard from any impact short of those that would destroy the craft entirely. These systems, combined with the craft's high speed and extreme durable armor, allowed the Kestis to deliver a full squad of space marines right into the bows of the enemy starship without any casualties. Eventually, the techno-archaeologist Arkan Land enabled the craft to be fitted with high-powered anti-gravitic plating, allowing it to be used in high-velocity orbital operations as well as operating as a heavy battle skimmer once it reached the ground and deployed its cargo of space marines. During the Great Crusade, a specialized unit known as a Breacher Siege Squad was created and used by many of the first founding legions. The battle brothers of this unit were equipped with specialized arms and augmented suits of hard power armor, usually variants of the Mark III iron pattern, modified by the legion's tech marines to better withstand the rigors of siege warfare lethal environments, and close-quarter boarding actions in space. Breacher siege squads often employed heavy shields known as boarding shields, which were large tower shields comprised of ceramide and plasteel. Each contained a small field generator, similar to that utilized in the small wrist-mounted combat shields. Boarding shields allowed breacher siege squads to absorb the sustained incoming enemy fire that normally accompanied the first breach into a void ship's hull. They also contain specialized breaching charges and las cutters to bypass bulkheads and shatter internal strong points. The servo and power systems of their armor were often overstrained as a result of their modifications. They often required constant extensive maintenance between battles. This deficiency was one of the factors that ultimately led to the Mechanica undertaking the tactical dreadnought armor development project in the last years of the Great Crusade. The final stage of a boarding assault mission is when the attacker has to make their desperate withdrawal from their target vessel. It may be that the boarders have succeeded in their mission to cripple the enemy warship and must now withdraw to their assault boats or teleportation point, even as the starship tears itself apart around them. Conversely, it is entirely possible that the boarding action has met with failure, having been repelled or perhaps recalled by their parent vessel, necessitating a hasty retreat as the void ship's ventral crew close in from every quarter. And those were 40 facts on the boarding action of a space marine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to share it with your friends on Facebook, Reddit, whatever social media you guys use. It really helps out the channel when you do so. Uh, now thank our patrons on Patreon. It's because of them that we can do this. There is a link in the description that takes you to the Patreon page. It's just a dollar a month. With that dollar, it pays for the giveaways that we do once a month, and it also helps us create these videos. So if you do support us on Patreon, thank you ahead of time. Um, if not, again, just liking, commenting, and sharing our videos really helps out the channel. We also have objective markers that we are selling um, so if you play the tabletop, um, there are some objective markers that uh, we created. We created 30. Um, I don't really know how much are left. Uh, once the 30 are gone, there's no more. Uh, we're not going to create them again. Um, so link in the description to the eBay page for those objective markers for the One Mind Syndicate merch is available. Even if you don't play the tabletop, they are kind of cool just to have because there's some of them. The, each one has its own specific, like... Um, army uh, theme so there's an orc one a tau one a space marine one an imperium one uh, so they're just kind of cool to have uh, if, even if you don't play the game or if you stop playing the game uh, so link in the description for that uh, this m most of what you saw came from the trailers for battlefleet gothic that is a game that um, we never played for the tabletop, and it seems interesting to play um, to play the video game, but it is something that we just never really got around to uh, doing. If anything, I think uh, Total War uh, is more seems more interesting uh, to play than than Battlefleet Gothic. But comment down below. Let me know if you guys have played either Total War or Battlefleet Gothic, and um, yeah, what do you guys think of the, the those video games? But with that said, guys, I will talk to you tomorrow. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>